Let us pray. God, our loving Father, grant wisdom to those who govern us, compassion and courage to those who work to defend human life, and safety and care to every human being. For you alone, who formed us in our mother's wombs and who call us home to heaven, our God, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, it's good to be with you here this afternoon. We know that back on January 22nd, 1973, a terrible event took place within the confines of our Supreme Court. This coming Friday, the anniversary of the tragic Roe v. Wade decision, which legalized abortion on demand in this great nation, we Catholic people are going to observe a day of prayer and penance for life. Advocacy for life is important, and public gatherings like this one in support of life are important. But in my judgment, prayer and fasting are also needed if we are going to change not only people's minds about the evil of abortion, but also their hearts. You know, once again, during the recent debates in Congress about health care reform, we've been sadly reminded how the abortion industry and its supporters are determined to eliminate the choice of medical professionals and entities to not become accomplices in killing unborn boys and girls. And despite all their talk about privacy, the abortion industry and its supporters are determined to trample on healthcare professionals' innermost privacy, that secret core and sanctuary we know as conscience. It's no longer enough in their eyes that women and girls can obtain drugs which facilitate abortion in virtually every pharmacy in the United States, or that women and girls can have abortions on request in every city where there is a profit to be had. They won't rest until every pharmacy, every hospital, every healthcare provider, and every taxpayer collaborates in the culture of death. We must pray and act to stop this assault on conscience. But there's also good news for us who have been promoting this cause for many years. Abortion advocates have suffered a great setback. You know as well as I that recent opinion polls tell us that most Americans say they are indeed pro-life and favor substantial restrictions on abortions. And you're the ones that made that possible. Fewer than one in four Americans now agrees with the current status of abortion under Roe v. Wade, which allows abortion on demand throughout all nine months of pregnancy. Our pro-abortion opponents attempt to marginalize us by saying that our pro-life agenda is simply a religious matter and has no place in civic debates. But my friends, we all know that matters of life and death do do indeed pertain to justice and human rights. The widespread practice of abortion is the tragic result of an ongoing cultural campaign against human dignity. Many people acknowledge the dignity and value of human life after birth, but they deny the same when it comes to human life before birth. And ironically, (laughs) Even though there are scientists who disdain our pro-life efforts, it's science itself which is making so obvious the humanity and the personhood of children in the womb. And you know, a culture of life is impossible when we legalize the direct taking of a human life when it's most innocent and defenseless. And too many folks today are committed to a conditional and selective vision of human rights. That Roe v. Wade decision has made abortion the battleground over our tradition of human rights, and it has polarized our society. Roe v. Wade has also become the inspiration and precedent for additional efforts to use law as a weapon against other innocent human lives. And that's why, my friends, we must always, always give priority to defending unborn children from direct attack. Let's remember, this is our issue. This is our moment. And we must never surrender. We must persevere in our efforts to protect life from conception 
to natural death. And pro-life pregnancy centers, mater maternity homes, church-based support networks for pregnant women and children, plus prayer and assistance efforts like precious children outside abortion facilities, these very undertakings merit our support and our participation. Because you know, this is the way, the only way I think, that we will be able to transform the culture of death into a culture of life. From heart to heart, one person at a time. And so God bless all of you on this important crusade, and God bless America.